bird. Shit bird, shit bird. Tummy wiggles, tummy wiggles. Check your mic, check your mic, check your mic. Check your mic, check your mic. Hey, check, 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 Well, hello and welcome to Idiots with Instruments, the show that follows Red Hot Rebellion as we write and record new music and interview very fancy people in the music industry. I am Jim Tremontana, and I did not mute the monitors. Oh. It's muted? That's Is it? Has it was it muted? Oh. oh. Well, all right. I'm Jim, and I play bass. I'm Doug. I play guitar. I'm Andres, and I play the drums. Today, we have a very special episode. Our bestest friend in the whole wide world, Mr. Vinny Fiorello from Less Than Jake, talks to us. So why don't we just go ahead and run that interview right about now? Sounds good. <laughs> Joining us today is a goddamn renaissance man of punk rock and cool shit. Co-founder of Fuel by Ramen Records and founder of Paper and Plastic Records, he is the drummer of Less Than Jake, the only band to rival Kiss in the sheer volume of band merchandise they've created in their 25 plus years career. He is an author, he is a toy maker, a tattoo shop owner, and a scholar, Mr. Vinny Fiorello. Vinny, welcome to Idiots with Instruments. How are you? Wow, that was quite an intro. I, I, I feel... Uh... <laughs> I feel great about that right now. My ego is is full, and uh, I'm ready to go. Yeah, I, you know what? I'm in Florida right now, and it was a very long last few months of touring. South America, it was Europe, it was Warp Tour, it was fly out shows, and that's all a good thing. I'm not complaining about it, but um, you know, a lot of travel, a lot of shows, a lot mm-hmm. of time zones. Your uh, your brain begins to turn to jelly. Turns so to uh, yeah, my brain is solidifying. So. Uh, I'm in Gainesville getting ready to, uh, this weekend, go up to Chicago uh, and Pittsburgh for two flyout shows. Nice, nice. So, yeah, you guys just finished the the farewell tour of the Warp Tour. Is that right? It's no more, huh? Correct. So was that a bittersweet well, you know, moment? Yeah, you know, here, here it is. I mean, it, it's something that I expected for a while because you can't do – you know, 20,000 people in Pomona and then drag it across the country and – in Kansas do 2000 people. It it just Mm. doesn't make sense. I mean, in a sort of business aspect of it, you're just eating all the profits that you made in one place because you want to bring it to another. And that's, that's Mm. commendable to, to Kevin Lyman who owned the tour. But at the same time, it's, it's not a great business model to have either in this day and age. So, uh, there's a lot more festivals out there. There's a lot more multi-band sort of tours that are six bands and five bands that, that go out uh, across and mm-hmm. you know it, it was the it was uh, a bittersweet moment but it was a time that i think needed to come so he can move on so mm-hmm. the warp tour name can move on into something else i mean it's been uh it's a 25th anniversary next year so i mean who knows what they're gonna do right, but i yeah. would think they would do something 25 years is crazy Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of like how Lollapalooza moved from a touring thing to just a Chicago destination festival. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So speaking of like twenty five years, so Lesson Jake has been around for what twenty six now, or is it we're good twenty six years? Yeah. Jesus Christ! Wow. So like your band is older than like you know most of Doug's kids, <laughs> 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 which is crazy to Our- think. Of. You know, our band can not only drink and smoke legally, but it also could like you know get into a bar fight and maybe like win could hold its own. So, <laughs> you know, it's pretty, yeah. feels pretty all right. That's pretty nuts. So like, I guess, I mean, there, there, we have, we don't have enough time to explore the entire history of less than Jake, but I guess just in a nutshell, like as a career musician, like what has like, what has been like the most, uh, um, I guess, fulfilling part of your career and what do you think has changed the most um, over the years? most fulfilling part of being in a band for the last 26 years is uh, being along for the ride for when people grow up and inevitably fall off and get back up again and grow up some more and then grow old and start families. And mm-hmm. less than Jake's been on that ride with a lot of people. And, and that truly is for me, if I walked away from the band today, I can honestly say that, the connections made and the connections made of what we did and do uh, 
that's that's amazing, man. There's right. there's nothing else that I don't think I have been a part of it or will ever be a part of something that has spanned generations now right. from fathers right. to sons and dads to daughters and moms to sons, moms to daughters. Uh, that's just a, a mind blower. And for yeah. people to come up to you and go, you know, when I was in college, you know, we, we drank to your songs and I, you know, was sad to your songs and I was happy to your songs and I listened to your songs cause I was lost and all those things. And you have adults telling you that, that have kids sitting next to them and they're telling you their story. That's it's a mind blower. So, uh, that's the most fulfilling thing about being a musician. Uh, the craziest, not the craziest, but, uh, the largest difference between now and then is technology and, right. uh, yeah. how people digest music and, and, uh, it's a simple thing, but you know, I, I'm not going to get lost on the topic, but I'll go with this, that the game changer of all of this is when, uh, s- storage for, for data became cheap before you couldn't touch, you know, a hundred gig hard drive. It, it cost you a mint of money, let alone a terabyte, mm-hmm. which was the craziest amount of money. You wouldn't even think about it. Like a terabyte drive. I, yeah, that's like I would NASA. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's like NASA hard yeah. drive, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah. It's crazy. And now, you know, I can cruise over to Best Buy, get a terabyte hard drive for like the price of a few tacos and a Coke, you know, right. like, yeah. And, uh, that's the game changer, man. That became, now I could dump everything. My friends, your friends, your friends, friends, my grandma's, whatever <laughs> movies, music, art, whatever it is, I could dump it into this and I can keep it, uh, in this file, this, this, whatever mm-hmm. forever. And it's never going to degrade supposedly. And, uh, the quality is going to be there forever. And, uh, that's, that was the game changer. That was, the moment where I went, oh, oh, we're in trouble because now it's not this, you know, a floppy disk before, and it was then it went from a floppy disk to, you know, the CD. That's what people were like, kind of trading and going, oh, I can burn the CD and here it is. But as soon as the cheap storage came, where people could literally take not only their collection of music but their ten other friends' collection of music with them around the world, mm-hmm. uh, you knew it was over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I guess keeping with uh, that same vein of digital technology, I mean, the recording technology has changed as well. I mean, you guys started, re- you know, recording in analog studios like the rest of us old fucks, and now it's all digital. I, I mean, does um, do you find like the quality any different, or have you kind of embraced the digital the digital uh, world with your recording? Yeah, you know, listen, Jake, we've done. Uh both. We've done analog recording, we've done digital recording, we've done analog recording and then dumped it to digital mm-hmm. and then finished recording and dumped it back. I mean, we've done every uh, combination under the sun and I think that you just have to get your head into uh, digital recording as a tool, you know, and some right. people rely on that tool a little bit too much. Other people use it for what it is, which is just easing, you know, making your life easier, recording your idea to, to, you know, uh, ones and zeros. Right. Right. Uh, the, 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 the real mind blower of this sort of thing is that now there's free tools online that people could download and make great studio quality sounding, uh, music without being in the studio, without having any prior knowledge of how to record Mm -hmm. there's presets and there's tons of crazy things. So, you know, when people go, Oh, you know, I I can't, I can't stand, let's say a a trap rap or a SoundCloud rap. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, but those guys, that's the spirit of what punk rock was. Those guys are leading that charge. You know, it's, they found those tools online. They bought a great microphone. They found the tools online and, they started to create and they started to create at a pace that is head spinningly insane that no rock band can ever keep up with. Right. Yeah. That's funny. We, me and Doug were talking about this today (laughs) about the, the need um, to be, to maintain relevance um, in like the modern age is you have to keep putting out music over and over and over again, constantly, constantly, especially um, when you're talking about SoundCloud artists and and it is a different animal than to a rock band, but um, like, 
you as a, I mean, you've been involved in record labels for, you know, many decades now. You've owned a couple. You founded a couple. Um, do you find, yeah. do you think the album is dead? Um, or is do singles rule again, just like they did back in the old days? You know what? I, to be honest with you, you know, it's, the, the, there's an adage, right, of, of a sim, there's a thousand similar things, right? But mm. it's, you know, music is dead, long live music, right? Right, yeah. Um, <laughs> And and it's true. It's a, it's a very odd thing that we're living in a renaissance of music. Literally, I can think of, hey, I want to listen to Kenny Rogers, right? right? Yeah, yeah. I don't own Kenny Rogers, but I can sure as shit could dial up Islands in the Stream right now, right? right. And uh, mm-hmm. listen to him and Dolly Parton rage through that song, and it scratches the itch immediately of what I want. Before, it was never like that. So uh, we're living in a renaissance of of being able to, to listen to music and to genuinely enjoy it and to embrace everything that is music. But at the same time, the creation of music, that idea of what it was, what a band could do and what a band could be, uh, that's dead, man. Uh, and so we've kicked the corpse around a bunch, but mm-hmm. I, it, the idea of what it was is dead. The idea of what it can be is still morphing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, for like a baby band, like there's, I mean, kids are still into the rock and roll. I mean, you see them all the time, like take going to school of rock, they're learning guitar, they're learning drums. Like would, would like to a 16 year old now who's like, you know, in a high school band, he's going to graduate college next year or high school shit. He's a, he's a boy genius. He's graduating high school next year. He's going to college and and it's like the old, the old thing was like, you, you know, you start a band, you jump in the van and you, and you, you truck. Um, is that still the, the way to like build a following these days or is it all online or is it a little bit of both? What would your advice be? It's, it's everything, man. It's everything that you can do being a young band. You have to do it's social media. It's, uh, not only having a, a band camp, but also being able to have your music digitally distributed to, you know, Apple music and, Mm -hmm. Uh, Pandora and iTunes and, and go down the line. And then it is getting in the van and it is shaking hands and it is having a beer at the bar. And it is trucking your ass across uh, the United States in a van with your best friends, right? Mm-hmm. Or maybe your, your worst enemies. Who knows how your <laughs> band is going, right? right. But yeah. uh, I think that there's a certain point that it's everything now. It's every, it's, mm-hmm. and I, I don't know if I, I've ever, we've had a lot of conversations, Jim, about like music marketing and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I've used this adage before and I've used it with other bands. Some bands get it. Some bands don't. Right. So, uh, marketing is a machine gun and each individual sort of, uh, idea or, you know, whether it is a distribution or whether it is, you know, press or whether it is, uh, uh, debuting a track on X site, whatever, whatever that is, right. Mm -hmm. You have to constantly load this machine gun and you have to, you're not, it's not a sniper rifle where these four shots are, are what it's for. You know, Mm -hmm. nowadays you have to spray these marketing ideas and hope one hits the target. Right. Uh, Uh Prior to that, it was a very, much more methodical way to market a record. You know, if you had the right press and you had the right songs mm-hmm. and you had the right tour and you had the right video, things would line up pretty nice, you know, pretty nicely. And it would be, you know, a, a semi successful thing on the basement level. And, but it could pop, you know, if it was at that right place, right time, that lightning strike type thing. Right. right. Uh, and, there's not just because you push a ton of money at something these days, that doesn't guarantee that it does anything. Sorry, I got it. That was a great answer, but someone was calling me on my phone and I'm trying to figure out how to send them the voicemail. Sons of bitches. <laughs> Digital <laughs> Technology. shit. Technology. <laughs> Technology. My ass. Yeah. It's actually our drummer. Who's probably locked out. Uh, we're down in the basement recording. Um, so, um, do you have time to talk a little bit about songwriting? Um, sure. How has your songwriting uh, changed over the years? Um, 
given like, I mean, you guys have been around for so long. I mean, you, you guys mostly write um, just the, the core group of you, but I know you've used, uh, you've worked with other songwriters. Um, lately, though, you've been writing and recording in Roger's studio. Is that correct? The, the mm-hmm. Moat House? That is correct. Is that That's something house, yeah. you're going to continue, uh, continue doing? And like, how is your, like, do you guys have it dialed in now or is it still kind of an exploration of, you know, your process? You know, the, the process is pretty dialed and it's, it's been the same forever. You know, it's that, you know, Chris and Raj, they have some chord ideas and some melody ideas. I have a bag of lyrical sort of tidbits and ideas about songs and song titles. And we come together when it's time to write and we all kind of throw it out there. And so, you know, what sticks and what other people are sort of attracted to and you start to build on there. And sometimes that works, and sometimes there's lightning in a bottle. Other times you have to work at a song. I mean, uh, again, it, it's been the pretty pretty much the same for the last 26 years of writing songs. It, it's right. This time around, though, there's ideas that you can go, oh, well, I have this idea. I'm going to uh, email it around to everybody. Or we worked on this idea at a session, and then uh, we recorded it just really quickly and then we can email it out to everyone or here's the lyrics and you want to take a look at it and have that vibe. So I think there's a point where it's all the same, but go back to what we originally said, we're using the tools at hand for, you know, from technology advances to make things a little bit easier. You know, it's whether it's a, a iPhone and we can use that iPhone to record demos, you know, while we're recording, you know, while we're writing in the writing process and the notes section now has, you know, pages and pages and pages of lyric ideas. Uh, so it's just, again, using the technology that's there, that's the only thing that's really changed is using that, that headspace. Other than that, the process stays the same. And, you know, the process always stays the same, right? You have this sort of creative flash. You start to put together some chords. You start to maybe hum a melody and you put mm-hmm. chords behind it, whatever it is. You put some lyrics there and you search for it and you refine it. And sometimes that takes five minutes and sometimes it takes five hours and sometimes yeah. it takes five days and sometimes it takes five months before you get it right. Yeah, that's the one thing about songwriting that's always perplexed me is like, why is it so easy sometimes? And then sometimes it takes fucking months to put something together. Um, I don't know. Is that's that's like the mystical aspect of it uh, of songwriting? But um, like each one of you guys kind of has your own little home studio too, right? Do you guys ever like you bounce tracks off of each other while while you're in like a writing session or? Or how does Everybody, uh, JR has, you know, Pro Tools set up. Buddy has Pro Tools set up. Chris has a Pro Tools set up. Raj has, I don't. Okay. Because for You're me... You're running I all the of rest go, of the shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's not even that, man. To be honest with you, like, my he- my headspace on it is that there was already always, there was already a guy that was there that in our band that was represented in doing that. So I concentrated on other things. Right. Yeah, yeah. And it was, it was, it was a simple thing. And I, I use that example a lot with other dudes and bands and go, well, dude, if there's two guys that are really like jazzed about recording and that's what they want to do, then find your own thing, man, and go your own path and try to add whatever it is to the band dynamic, because that's right. what a band is. A band's just not one person. A band is a group of people. It's a chemical reaction that happens amongst X amount of people. And uh, very much I think of bands as a sum of their parts, not as one person dictating what their idea is and just being executed by other people. That's not a band to me. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the band is is greater than the sum of its parts, always, I guess. I yeah. think anyway, that's why like when some dudes go solo or some dudettes go solo, it's not nearly the same um, excitement of the, that original band you heard them on. So uh, speaking of Gainesville, what what the hell's in the water there that makes so much great music come out of there? You know what? I think that it's the seclusion of being sort of, you know, we joke about it. It's this sort of blue dot in a red sea of the rest <laughs> of Florida, you know, yeah. and it, yeah. it's Gainesville. You have to you know, get through a lot of small towns to get into Gainesville. So uh, you stack 80,000 college kids that are relatively isolated. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
you you get some interesting creative moments you yeah. know not only in music but in art and, and you yeah. know um in all kinds of art you know whether it be visual art design poetry go right. down the line you yeah. know yeah i once uh, picked a fight with an entire toga party and won in gainesville so that's <laughs> my claim to fame <laughs> I also almost had my ass kicked uh, by an, another party for something I didn't do, but you know that's Gainesville for you, kids. That is Gaines. That is Gainesville for sure. <laughs> that's awesome. And I don't know if you knew this, uh, but uh, I mean, I know you know I'm from Central Florida, and me and Buddy went to high school together. But did you know that I, he was the singer in my first band, and that band was called the Hebrew Love Waffles? <laughs> I, I I know, but uh, I didn't know you were part of the Hebrew Love Waffles, but. <laughs> Uh, hmm. I knew about the Hebrew love waffles. Yeah. Yes. Legendary. I know that you're from uh, nothing really, but it just Buddy had mentioned. Oh yeah, Hebrew, and it was who else was in the band? Was it uh, was Mike McGill also in the uh, band? Mike was Bell. It? Mike Bell was in the band. Mike Bell. Yeah. There it is. Yep. Mike Bell. Doctor Mike Bell, who atmospheric scientist. Yep, yep, yep. Yes. Yeah. Um, we yes. played a couple of parties. Never got into any fights, but yeah, Buddy's got and an then amazing. You were, you were in uh, with a. You were in a ska punk band yep, from was, Orlando for a while, yep, right? I was in Stizzle and then Spit Valves, and I think that's where uh, uh, both those bands played with Les and Jake long, long ago. But uh, yeah. Um, yeah, Buddy got dragged me into the world of rock and roll, and I sold him his first PV Rage amplifier because he was he was a year ahead of me. He went off to school. He's like, "Man, I need an amplifier." Jim's got an amp, and he's not playing guitar right now, so I sold him it for fifty dollars. And now he's nice. a rock and roll machine. <laughs> 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 so, um, yeah, Andres, our drummer, just showed up, and yeah, uh, he hey, wants sorry. to say hi because he's a drummer. So ask Vinny a question, dude. I do. Um, uh, first first of all, I'm going to uh, be awkward because that's a thing that I do. Um, <laughs> and I, I would just like to say thank you to you uh, because when I started playing the drums, I got a cassette at a Less Than Jake show with all my friends are metalheads on it and oh, yeah. uh, and that song it took me forever to realize that you were playing the hi-hat with one hand because it seemed impossible to me at the time <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and that kind of uh changed the entire way that i played the drums so thank nice. you for that nice um well, I feel good about that. yeah so now that that uh, uncomfortableness is over <laughs> Did you talk about uh, what you got into before you were in? No, we left that question for you. That's for you. So I I like to find out like how. So obviously um, we would like to be more successful with music, but we have regular asshole jobs still. Um, So I'm always curious what people did at the beginning of their band career for money. (laughs) And then kind of how, how you worked your way up when, uh, first of all, what did you have a sure. job or? Of course, you know, uh, I had I put up uh, flyers around Gainesville for a local club, so I was a wood paster and I was a stapler to telephone poles. That was you know before uh, <laughs> people didn't you know people you know it's weird because I can't think about that now. I mean, if, imagine if I was out there like putting up a thousand flyers of these eight and a half by 11 people be like, dude, you're killing a bunch of trees man. <laughs> yeah, go right. online and make a Facebook event for Christ's yeah. sakes. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so for a local bar, I was out there doing street promotion. Uh, and that was between midnight and 3 AM. So oh, wow. it was a wow. wild time out there. Uh, other than that, to be honest with you, I was going to college at the time and, I was living off, you know, student loans and okay. uh, cheap food and and ramen and just <clears throat> cutting every corner possible, doing that while working a crappy job and uh, bouncing into it. I, I worked at Hungry Howie's one day <laughs> and I uh, grated uh, 150 pounds of cheese. <laughs> uh, wow! And I went uh, after that. I just was never went back. I, I, I was like, I, I can't do this. I, yeah. this yeah. is you know, that one day sucked like the life out of me. I was like, <laughs> I can't imagine doing that for weeks on end, months on end. So just, you know, got a bunch of student loans that I owed back later and just used that to live off of and worked a weird job for under the table cash and <laughs> kind of uh, did what I had to do. But it's odd because, uh, 
you're in college. So that's what you're doing anyway. Is it college right. is this weird uh, rain delay on life? <laughs> you know, yeah. it, it, you're you're in you're in high school and you're sort of gaining momentum, gaining momentum, and then you hit college and it's just you hit a pause before you go on to try to live the rest of your life after college and college, you're supposed to learn a career, you know, you're supposed to learn enough knowledge to have a career. But for mm-hmm. most people, you're just learning how to do a bong hit and, you know, <laughs> right. yeah, how yeah, to do, yeah. you know, some, some other, you know, just weird parlor, you know, parlor tricks at the bar, right? Like, right. yeah. That's or learning how to play guitar really well. Right. Or, yeah. Or, or, drums, or, right. or you're learning how to play guitar. And, yeah. and for me, it was just this, lesson in how to be passionate about something and push myself to work harder and work faster and work longer than anybody else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I would say lesson Jake definitely is one of the hardest working oh, bands yeah. in existence, you know, oh, for sure. What were you going to school for? It's funny because I'm back going to school for it currently. <laughs> we uh, were going to ask okay. you about that. That was okay. a good segue. Yeah. yeah. So tell I, us that story. I had a. I was going to school for uh, uh, special education, so oh, nice. I went and I got a master's in special education, and I'm back at school, going to be uh, to basically get a specialist degree in special education, and that happened weirdly enough last wake and bake. We were doing a signing at a local bar for like the VIPs that were there. A woman came up to me and said. Do you know who I am? I go, I have no idea who you are. She goes, <laughs> I was your guidance counselor when you were going to the University of Florida uh, back in the late 90s. I went, wow, you know, well, good to see you. And she goes, you do realize that there's a lot of things that have gone on between then and now. And we've talked about you inside this, and you, the white whale, you know, sort of because <laughs> you did a bunch of other things and then you kind of stopped and then you started to tour and then you have a career now which is great and i was like yeah 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 whatever and she emailed me and said hey i talked to the dean and the dean said if you take these three classes one a semester because they're the workload is pretty gnarly right okay uh, yeah. if you take one of these uh each semester you'll graduate in fall of the at the end of fall 2018 and i went okay. well okay <laughs> yeah. and I, I, th- I thought to myself that when something like that happens and it lays in your lap, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. you have to do it. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Mm-hmm. So, you, so you were basically yeah. like writing term papers and studying while you were on tour, weren't you? I yeah. was trying to find a wife, <laughs> trying to find a stable <laughs> Wi-Fi yeah. enough to uh, uh, read articles and send articles and watch videos mm-hmm. and watch uh Ed movies and things like that, and uh, it it really added a, a weird twist to how I was touring. Mm-hmm. But on top of all of that, it added like thirteen hours a week on an already fairly heavy uh, oh, yeah. right. workload Schedule. that I have. Yeah, so yeah. I can uh, kind of relate to that because I, I I finished my master's while I was out on the road with with spit valves, but we were not touring every day <laughs> at the fucking warp yeah. tour. They were like small ass bar shows up to New Jersey and back. So so kudos to you yeah, for I, fucking I, pulling I, it I, off. I man. definitely uh, toward the end of it started to uh, lose it. Yeah. Pressure <laughs> started to like uh, build up. Uh, make it crack because yeah. there's a point where I just was like I I don't have the time and I don't have the the sort of forethought to see what is over the horizon line i still don't man like life is i've come to the conclusion after 26 years of being in a band after being a dad being a husband and writing a bunch of music and doing all this stuff and record labels and toys and everything that i don't know what comes over the horizon line and i my you ask like, oh, how did you, you know, go from college kid to uh, being in a, a band that was a little bit more successful than a little bit more successful, and yeah. or a record label that you know was had some success, and then a little bit more, and then a little bit more in these baby steps? Because I, I my strongest suit ever was seeing past the horizon line to work not only towards the visible end, but this invisible 
and beyond, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, without getting too crazy, I, and I'm sorry if I am, right? But like, no, no this is a uh, safe good, space. Man. Get crazy, yeah, yeah. yeah. Safe space. Talk so, right. so for, for me, like I, my strongest suit, and uh, I, I could see past that horizon line. For some people, it was like, well, if we can only get on this label, or if we can only get a record out. And I was saying, well, I don't just want the tour. I don't want the record label. I want the record label, then the record in every stores and then uh, the record worldwide. And then, and then, and then, and then then I just reaching for that next step or that next level. Yeah. So you're saying now it's at the point myself. I saw myself breezing by the goals. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, so some people would have a goal uh, of just yeah. X. My goal would be X squared. Right. So I would just breeze by the X and hmm. try to get to the X squared. And then now you're saying that you're at a point where you're not really sure what that X squared that is. X squared <laughs> is. X, X, maybe, it's, maybe it's time to slow down then, man. I mean, you're, you're raising a daughter, mm-hmm. you've got a family, you know, you're, you know, maybe it's time to like, like you like focus on, you know, just you, man, you know, 100, 100%. And that's yeah. part of, and then the only reason why I bring this up is that was the, the catalyst to go back to school, right. you know, to gain more knowledge, different yeah. knowledge. Dude, I want to learn how to make a lamp. I don't know how to make a lamp, right? I don't have that knowledge of yeah. how to make a lamp from scratch, but I want to know that. You know, I right. don't know how to make a bath bomb for my daughter, but you know, I got the stuff and I ordered it, and I'm going to make a bath bomb for her and figure yeah. out how to do it. Like that's where my brain is at. My brain is at trying to gather as much knowledge on a personal level, not only musically, but just for whatever, because it all applies back. Right. Yeah. To a yeah. music mm-hmm. idea. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, cause it's all, it's all interconnected. I mean, that's, that's kind of like our, our, what we, I, we're kind of turning into like kind of a self help kind of <laughs> Pod, uh, um, yeah. podcast, podcast because like so yeah. much of like the people we talk to is it's, I mean, it is, it's about finding yourself. It's about communication. It's about friendship. It's right. about love. It's about truth. It, yeah. Um, f- figuring out what you want out of life and yeah. trying to get it. Right. Figuring out what the variable of y equals right. x squared. <laughs> Man, yeah. you're, you're dropping some yeah. knowledge on us right now. So I guess sp- while we're we're in the moment, well, we're here in our truth zone. Maybe you could answer this one question for me. You can only choose one, Finn. You can only choose one desert island question: Iron Maiden or Judas Priest? Well, it's Iron Maiden. Fuck yes, oh. it is. <laughs> That's right. See, Iron Maiden's making a comeback. When we first started doing this damn thing, most people were saying Priest. And I, mm-hmm. as you know, I have a whole wall of Iron Maiden posters in my studio. And I am just so heartened. My heart is swelling like an evil beast to hear you say that, man. <laughs> that is amazing. You know, but, yeah, but here's the thing. How could it be? I'll, I'll ask you the question of how could it not be made it? Right. Well, I mean, Priest has a lot of fine songs, man. They've had more radio No, 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 no. But Priest is great. Don't get me wrong. You know, there's a lot of records that they have and a lot of really like the jams are the jams, right? You know this, right? Yeah, of course. But, but, <laughs> Maiden, man, like, yeah. they, they not only have the jams, but they have the art on the records. They have the merchandise. They have... You know, not only one variant of a record, they have 10 variants. Right. They have the stage show, and not a, a stage show. They have a replica full size World War II plane flying overhead. <laughs> on their yeah. Yeah. And speaking they of planes, and fucking Bruce is a pilot who flies them around the world. They so, are the champions. <laughs> so, yeah. how could it not be made in? <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah. Priest that, is great, yep, but how can it not be made? And Maiden has so much more. That's, man. that's the name of this episode. How could it not be Maiden? Um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. true. Fuck good. yeah, man. So, <laughs> well, Vin, we won't take too much more of your time. We we really appreciate you for for chitty chatting with us. Um, where where can people find you on that worldwide interwebs? What's the best way to contact with you? Well, the contact with myself would be. I only really pay attention to one social media and that would be Instagram and that would be Wonderland War is my screen name for that and that's W U 
N B E R L A N D W A R. And uh, I respond to DMs and I respond to uh, any questions. And that's my sort of conduit to fans and friends and family uh, who don't want to pick up the phone and call me. <laughs> I mean, like, you want to know the, you don't want to know the thing I've gone through everything. Now I went from, I love, I love being on the phone to, I hate being on the phone mm-hmm. and I'll only text. Then I went, I hate texting. I'm only getting email. Now I go, I hate email. <laughs> I hate texting. Now just call me, phone. man. Yeah. Like call me and say, Hey dude, what's up? Let's, let's get a pizza, man. Let, let's, um, Ooh, you want oh, to uh, yeah. learn how to do whatever? Then let's let's do that. Call. Fuck don't yeah. don't text me. Don't email me. Just call Just me call. like a human being, man. So Vinny's phone it. number is. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to out no. you on on the <laughs> internet. But speaking of pizza, this is another thing. Um, I know. You, I mean, obviously, you, you mentioned we you live in Gainesville, but you've traveled the world. You're an Italian stallion. You've spent your time in New York City like a fair, like a good ma- American man. Where do you think the best place in New York City to get a slice of pizza is? Uh, um, double zero. All right. Well, fuck that. Where's the best place in Gainesville <laughs> to get a slice of pizza? Uh, Leonardo. All right. Good. There you go. <laughs> All right. Not Hungry Howie's. Hungry Howie's makes a fine pie, but they made him shred too much cheese. Well, <laughs> you know what? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hungry Howie's makes a fine pie, but I created 150 pounds of their cheese. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I guess there's no slides. a significant there. amount of cheese. Yeah, that's, cheese. That, that's, like, hey, I'm from Wisconsin, yeah. and I love cheese. <laughs> And that's a lot of but, cheese. Yeah, I don't think I've ever held 150 pounds of cheese. Hey, would you like to? <laughs> oh! oh! <laughs> I don't get it. Oh, that's me crap. neither. <laughs> me neither. Well, well, all right, Vinny. We will, uh, we're going to call you again since you just told us that we should call you every week. This will be now the, <laughs> the Vinny Fiorello and Red Hot Rebellion show. And yeah, we can talk I, about I, toys I, and I, shit. I, I, you can think of one question every week and then you call me i'll answer that one question <laughs> that would be awesome oh, <laughs> Dude, that yeah, would be good. Awesome. we do have right. a segment called Un- awkwardness with andres yeah, where he like is just super awkward that, yeah 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 yeah. but maybe yeah. that's what we'll do we'll like just i'll randomly call <laughs> oh, you without telling him and then like when he get when you get on the phone we'll make andres talk to you oh, uh, that's okay. great that's but i don't want to talk but here's the, here's the parameters real quick and okay. then i'm gonna run okay no talking about my personal self, not talking about any less than Jake, not talking about, ask me any question that doesn't have to do with people, what people know me for. Ask me okay. all the other stuff. That sounds so, awesome. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, okay. There we go. There it is. Yeah. Right, the new right. segment. I'll talk to you guys next week. Then. All right. Yep. <laughs> yeah, all you right. sure as shit will. All right. Sweet. Love you, Vinny. Thank you so Thanks, much. Vinny. We'll talk to you soon, yeah. man. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Right. Later, Thanks, man. man. Bye. 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 Man, what a great interview. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sorry I missed the first what, half of it? Nah. Like nah, like, you only yeah. you only called um on the device that I was recording the interview on. <laughs> yeah. <that's fine. laughs> Through, well, I mean. Right. Um, I did I didn't realize fine. that you had started yet. Yeah. yeah. I didn't I, Yeah. That's okay. I, that's hey. Fine. That's what this fucking show was real, man. We yeah. don't uh we don't cut corners. It was a great interview. We don't bust balls. Did yeah, it, it was. It didn't ruin anything, did it? No. Fuck okay. no. No, in no. fact it made it more interesting. Yeah. Okay. You know, that's we, we do this shit as we do it. So, yeah, nice guy. What did I yeah. miss? He was very nice. Um, yeah. He talked about how much he hates drummers besides himself. Oh, and really? Anyone. <laughs> oh, that's he, really funny. He, he yeah. also talked about how he hates when people tell them how good of a drummer he is. And oh, really? <laughs> no. Oh, no. yeah, that's fine. No. I didn't say he was. <laughs> I didn't tell him how good of a drummer he was, yeah. oh, okay. even though I think he's a and good And then drummer. that one part about oh. how he hates fucking call waiting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beeps yeah. while you're on the phone. <laughs> yeah, he was like... <laughs> He's like, man, if someone calls during this there fucking was, interview, I, I'm I, out of here. I can't remember what we what you had asked him, but he was talking and uh, and you were and you were calling. Yeah, and it was and really was, deep. Yeah, it was like this really deep uh, answer. And he was, it was like, like it, relating like really iPhone. intense personal yeah. information, and it's like, and then when I looked into his beep and I saw, <laughs> it was, I, I almost oh, cried when I'm I saw sorry. beep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I, I, I all I could see on my phone was what how to join the call. Right. I couldn't. See, oh, you see. totally should have done that. I, know, I, I thought about it. <laughs> it like, been perfect. If you would have called back, then I heard the dogs barking yeah. upstairs. Yeah. So then I was like, if you called back, I was totally going to yeah. join you. And then <laughs> that that's, been, what, yeah. that's what Jimmy's like. Oh, it's Andres. So I was like, oh shit. Oh yeah. man. 
Anyway. Yeah. So there yeah, is, is traffic. People. If Real. traffic ever fucks me up again, just yeah. call me. <laughs> we okay. Yeah. Do a, good. A yeah. Conference go. call. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's uh, we tried that with Doug once, but he was working like right. like a yeah, regular yeah. asshole. Yeah, he wasn't yeah, just yeah. sitting in traffic like so, an ass bag. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry about so, that. So yeah. So yeah. Great interview, everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So yeah, we learned a lot. Um, I can't remember. I'll have to re- re-listen to it to, to you know remember <laughs> what we talked about. I'll have to listen to the first time. Dude. That's it. Y equals x squared. That's right. Yeah. That's my takeaway. God What's on the right. horizon? Yeah, we don't know. You know, do what you feel. Do what you. Yeah, yeah we. Uh, yeah, just, yeah. Stay. And now we have a new segment, so right. we're gonna just call Vinny up randomly. Is, and get... it, is that like really? Is oh yeah, he, he was serious, serious about that. If he's not, it's gonna fucking happen anyway. That's <laughs> fantastic. We'll just call I, it, I can uh, think of all sorts of we'll questions. We just call him every week, and if you don't answer, we'll leave him a message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then maybe he'll he'll like. Um, yeah, we'll just ask him the question, right. and then right. it'll just be open ended. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, or we got his, we got his Instagram shit. We yeah. can start oh, making yeah. Instagram. Well, posts. I've, I've been right. following him on Instagram. Yeah. I can fucking message him right now. I guess there I didn't go. realize yeah. that he was. Some yeah. people are real weird about like not wanting to be messaged right. and whatever. Yeah, yeah. So and yeah, it's I don't yeah. know. Don't, yeah, and it, and don't it's, fucking message. I, me yeah, never. I generally s- right. don't message. people people that i follow when i don't know them right yeah because you never know <laughs> or even, some people find it even when i do know them i yeah. don't I generally right. don't yeah, message like we people. had no idea where you were because right. you didn't fucking text me <laughs> right so, well i was driving and well traffic, that's good so. that's good that's good yeah, so now fun. i feel like a real dick <laughs> that i both emailed then texted him to twice to remind him and ask him about this interview Ooh. because he's like i don't like email and i don't like texts oh that's, that's, that's why that's he fine. said that shit he yeah because <laughs> yeah, he was talking fine. to me he's well, talking to you he's like you son of a bitch <laughs> you motherfucker yeah but how are you like, i don't give a that. shit if you're from florida yeah. just like me you're a piece of shit no he would never say that i don't know maybe he yeah. would. i don't know but that yeah they go strong all right so that'll do it for this episode of idiots with instruments Idiots with Instruments is a free listener-supported show, and if you want to do something awesome for us, you can leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. Or, hey, you know what they could do, Doug? They could share the show on social media Mm. with the hashtag Idiots with Instruments. What do you think of that? That's great. Or you could be super awesome and become a patron of the show. We have a bunch of great rewards set up for as low as $1.00. And you can help steer the future of the show for all eternity. Did you know that, Anders? Uh, you I- can just head over to <laughs> idiotswithinstruments.com and click the reward that tickles your fancy. Is that $1 a month? $1 a month. Hmm. That you sounds can, very reasonable. It is extremely $12 reasonable. $12 a year? Yeah, for all this grand entertainment yeah. and fucking insights and knowledge from the man himself, Vincent Vincenzo Fierrello. Yeah. Our goal here is not only to entertain, but to also share insight into the insane world of the music industry. Yep. We hope you enjoy it, and we'll see you next time. As always, I'm Jim Tremontana saying, keep it simple. <laughs> I'm Doug. Uh, stay hydrated. I'm Andres. Never play acoustic. Lay it on thick! Bye. Bye. Idiots with Instruments is a solid arts and science production. All rights reserved throughout the multiverse. Please subscribe and review the show on iTunes or your podcatcher of choice. Visit idiotswithinstruments.com for exclusive bonus material and to support or sponsor this show.